The prime focus of today's workshop is all the students and learners of Bangladesh who themselves are GIS enthusiasts and want to reach to the new dimensions of GIS technologies. Supermap as it holds the position of being the largest GIS manufacturing shares in Asia and third largest in the world has decided to flourish its innovative market in Bangladesh. A land full of geo-intellectuals and a land where potentials can be found even in the remotest corner. Supermap has been trying to provide the sustainable solution to wide spectrum of sectors for the students since the very beginning of its start. On the other hand, OST Innovation and Design Club, widely known as OST IDC, is the first ever technology-based club established in Asunola University of Science and Technology, Dhaka. Since 2017, it has been considered as the biggest and the leading most impact creating students club in the campus arena. The club carries a massive brand value across and beyond the country. So today we all are here to see the focus on demonstrating different technologies to achieve the best network and 3D special analysis based solutions. So in the presence of our professionals and through their valuable speeches and demonstrations, I'm certain that there will be new doors to exploring GIS in much different and advanced manner. So to jumpstart our event today, let us all hear some opening remarks from Evelyn Sun, General Manager of Supermap Asia and Oceania Center. Evelyn, are you there? Hello. Hello, Sarah. Yes. Okay, yeah, thank yeah. you. Thanks, all yours. Okay. So, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Evelyn, representing Supermap. And I hope everyone there is fun and in good health because now we have special situations. <laughs> so, today is a, a splendid day for me because I have got a chance to meet all of you. Actually, we have a, a number of webinars in Bangladesh for the past few weeks. So, here you, you can see me again. <laughs> I think there are some students or practitioners or participants who also joined our previous webinars. So I'm very delighted to represent Supermap in front of all of you and for the event today. And I hope that for the event, you will be able to learn the new technology and solution from Supermap. And here today, I would like to express our gratitude to Professor Dr. Bobby Barua for being present here today. And uh, we are very happy to collaborate with uh, the students and the universities to provide insights to from Supermap technologies. And also our special thanks goes to OST Innovation and Design Club from the University of Science and Technology for supporting us with all the uh, successful workshops today. And uh, today I would like to uh, say that um, because you know we have uh, cooperated with the universities for a number of webinars in the past, and we got a lot of very positive feedbacks from the participants. So I hope that after the webinar today, for the participants, you will be uh, contacting with our host and also our representatives in Bangladesh to give us the your suggestions and also your comments that will help us to improve the webinars in the future. So hopefully by the efforts from both Supermap team and from the jazz petitioners in Bangladesh, we can work together to contribute to the society and contribute to the uh, cities and your areas. Uh, so thank you and hopefully you will enjoy the webinar today. Thank you, Zarin. Thank you so much, Evelyn, for your wonderful words. Thank you. So now it's time for me to welcome Professor Dr. Bobby Borua. He's the professor in Department of Electrical and Electronic Engineering of Asanullah University of Science and Technology. He is one of the most prominent professionals in the field of technologies in Bangladesh, and his research interests include the optoelectronics and photonics, optical fiber communication system, optical networks, satellite communications, mobile and infrared communications. Sir, can you hear us? Yeah, yeah. I can hear you. Okay. Is, uh, is my audio, uh, voice is audible? Uh, yes, we can hear. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for my introduction. Uh, okay. Uh, so first of all, I would like to congratulate the presenters, those those who will go to, uh, to present 
or introduce the GIS technology to the students or the participants in this event. Okay, first of all, I would like to thank the organizers, those who uh, organized this uh, wonderful uh, event, uh, for the not only for the academician, also for the engineers, those who are working in the field. Uh, Austin Innovation and Design Club, uh, uh, you already told that. The Austin Innovation and Design Club are in, uh, in uh, starts its journey on 24th May 2017. From then, uh, is working uh, to for the improvement of the uh, technological uh, side uh, for the development of the not only for the students also for the uh, the professionals uh, for their betterment in uh, their field. Uh, as you know, the OST is uh, OST conducted by a semester, and on there, uh, the uh, there are two semesters. Uh, one is spring and another is fall. On each year. In, and each semester, uh, Austin Innovation and Design Club try to uh, conduct uh, two major events. Uh, one is uh, inter-university and another is intra-university. Uh, and on that aspect, in inter-university competition, uh, uh, we try to uh, conduct this uh, program on uh, fall semester. And, uh, and uh, each year, uh, last two years, we, uh, we tried uh, a name the program is Mind Spark, and and in spring semester we try to conduct our uh, inter university competition uh, that is named as uh, Innoventure. So uh, this year also we conducted uh, Innoventure 21. Uh, even though in this pandemic situation, OS Innovation and Design Club. Uh, always try to uh, encourage the peoples who are trying to uh, trying for the development of the betterment of their engineering field. Uh, they always conducted a different event uh, for uh, for their and this year also they tried online basis because of the pandemic, and they they are successfully uh, completion their events also. I also would like to thank the GIS uh, for their planning and uh, to for the uh, uh, and, and for the help for the development of uh, students participants also for the engineers those who are working in this field. So thank you and hopefully uh, this workshop will be uh, helpful for the uh, for the participants and those who are, uh, are very much uh, going to the to, will take their career in this field. So thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you so much, sir, for your remarkable words. And we we really hope that we will be able to be collaborated with all studies in the future projects as well. So now I would like to um, now I would like to give the floor to Vela Halla, the technical support engineer of Supermap Asia and Oceania Center, to start today's main session with the presentation and the demonstrations. She has always been splendid in her works and has taught a lot of people from all over the world through her demonstrations and international workshops. So if you have any questions regarding presentation and the demonstration, please feel free to ask in the QA section and in the chat box. Our technical team will answer all the questions for you. So yeah, the Vela, can you hear me? Yes, Jerry, and all clear. Yeah, you can start. All right, um, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, let me introduce myself first. My name is Bella. I'm a technical support engineer from Supermap uh, International. So today I will um, give you some uh, explanations and also live demonstration about the 2D network analysis and also the 3D spatial analysis. 
But before that, uh, before I move on to the topic of this workshop, let me briefly introduce Supermap so that you can be familiar with it. All right. So Supermap uh, was found in Beijing 1997 by Dr. Ur Urshin Zhong. For approximately 23 years, uh, we have helped humans in solving various problems with GIS as the main uh, foundations. And we have about 4,000 4, employees spreading in uh, all around the world. And we have more than 1,000 partners in uh, more than 30 countries. And we have around 38 branch offices and subsidiaries. So there are five uh, main key technologies of Supermap GIS uh, that are the basis for solving spatial problems uh, encountered using the Supermap platform. The first one is Big Data GIS. Uh, we support to do whole process of Big Data. Actually, Big Data is a very popular technology in recent years, and I believe not only in China, but also in the world. Uh, in all the overseas market, they have made a lot of use uh, of this Big Data GIS. Basically, in Supermap, Big Data GIS is divided into three main parts. Those are spatial big data visualizations, uh, spatial big data analysis and processing, and the last one is spatial big data storage and management. And the second key technologies is uh, artificial intelligence or AIGs. This is based on the basic support of data, database, and also framework, so as to realize three functions related to AIGs. Those are GeoAI, uh, AI for GIS, and GIS for AI. And we have also uh, the third key technologies, which is the three-dimension GIS. Supermap developed uh, these functions uh, uh, the 3D modeling function from 2009 by integrating some technology like uh, data models, scene construction, spatial analysis, and also the software form. And the next one is distributed cheese. Uh, this is one uh, in our new value. It, this is just released in the last GTC 2020. The, our GIS conference, and we have our capability to manage spatial computing in more than one machine, including for analytic storage and uh, visualizations, and it has four components. Uh, the first one is distributed geospatial data engine, uh, and the second one geo blockchain. The third one is distributed geospatial analysis and processing technologies, and also we have the cloud native and HGIS technologies. And the cross uh, and the fifth one is the cross platform. Uh, it means that our software is not only running on Windows operating system, but Supermap also able to be open in Linux operating system. And uh, our product was served in various terminals such as desktop, uh, cloud-based, and also mobile as well. All right, so that's a very short introduction to Supermap. Now let's move on to the uh, to the theme itself. Uh, in this webinar, I will explain and demonstrate uh, to the network analysis and also 3D spatial analysis of Supermap uh, platform. When it comes to two-dimensional network analysis, we may know its definition itself. What is network analysis? Network analysis is a process to solve the practical problems by analysis in network models, such as we have the path analysis, and also we have the surface area analysis, and uh, closest facility analysis, and we have many more. And who can utilize this solution or who can take advantage of the solutions? At present, network analysis has been widely used in many industries. Uh, I will give you some examples, such as the first one, we have the, of course, electronic navigations. 
and telecommunication industry, and also transportation and tourism. And as we all know, in the world of geographic information, uh, public infrastructure such as power facilities, telecommunications, uh, cable TV network, or road traffic, or even the water network is abstracted as a network system composed of many interconnected lines. So as long as they have a network system that they need to manage and analyze in spatial, they can take advantage on these solutions. Actually, network analysis uh, facilitates the commerce and also the public services, as well as our daily life. Um, the analysis result can provide an effective implementations proposal to help the users to make rational decisions. Network analysis can help to solve the following practical problems. I listed some of the practical problems that uh, happen in our daily li daily life, such as what is the shortest route from point A to point B. Uh, and the second one in the tourist attractions, how to choose route which can pass the most points of the interest at a time. And the third one, how big is the coverage area of the customers of a newly opened supermarket and how to determine its purchase volume. And the fourth one, how to dispatch the recent fire engines for the rescue in the event of fire. And the last one I listed, uh, how can a distributor deliver all his delivery tasks in the shortest time? A network analysis can solve these problems. All right, so uh, I want to show you a live demonstrations of the network analysis, specifically in particular, we will talk about transportation network analysis or traffic analysis. Okay, we will, uh, in this demonstrations, we will use uh, supermap idexstop.net version 10.1.1. And you can also download this uh, software actually in our website, or maybe you can visit this link. I will share this link in the, the chat group later, maybe if you want to try it by yourself. And if you download this product, you will have a three month trial license um, to have a try. Okay, now we're getting into the exercise itself. This is this picture shows the workflow of the live demonstration today. First, we will create the network data and then we will uh, perform some analysis regarding the traffic network analysis, starting from optimal path analysis. And then uh, we will perform traveling salesman problem TSP analysis. And we will perform closest facility analysis service array analysis and location allocation analysis. Actually, there are still many more analysis um, included in the network, in the traffic network analysis. But since the time is very limited today, because we will also be uh, doing some demonstrations about the 3D and spatial analysis. So I just pick uh, six example, uh, five examples of the network analysis itself. Before we perform the analysis, uh, let me explain to you what is uh, the network model itself. Uh, actually in Supermap, there are two kinds of uh, Supermap network models, which are transportation network models and facility network models. Both model can be represented in the 2D, uh, dim two dimensional and also in three-dimensional network. What is the difference between the transportation network models and the facility network models or the public facility network models? The main differences between those two uh, type, those two type of network models are as follows. Uh, transportation network models is a non-directional network. Uh, maybe uh, the most common one is the route transportation network. 
and traffic network analysis or the transportation network analysis is usually used for route searching and also locate uh, route locating and the facility network models uh, it is a directional network uh, usually including like natural gas pipeline rivers and so on and in this webinar we mainly discuss about the traffic network models or the tra transportation network models so we're going into details what is network itself sorry let me okay what is network itself the network is a model which is composed of a group of inter interrelated arts interrelated arts and nodes and also their attributes and the network can express the real world roads and also pipeline or etc as shown in this figure the network not only has the abstracted topological relationship between arc and nodes but it has also geometric location feature and also geographic attribute feature of geospatial sorry of geospatial data what do we mean by a uh, topological relationship topological relationship is the cross correlation between geographical object in spatial location such as the connection uh, relationship of nodes and lines and also lines and polygons Therefore, we need to understand the basic concept of the network models. Uh, this is the, these are the nodes, arcs, and network resistance. Network resistance is a cost of nodes and arcs that is basically stored in the attribute field as the resistance field, such as maybe if we are analyzing the um, road network, the cost will be like a distance or time, or even the uh, velocity, and others. And the next one, we have the center point, obstacle edges, obstacle points, and also a turntable. What is turntable? Turntable, uh, this, is, this, uh, this data saves the cost of turning. Turning itself is the process that an arc pass through the middle node to arrive the adjacent arc. All right, so we will um, go to Supermap IDEX top to demonstrate this one, creating network model. But before that, uh, we need to prepare uh, some of the following before building the network data. First, we need to prepare the data set of building the network data. Uh, the data set could be a point data set. This is optional because we can also create the point by intersection of line. But the main uh, data that should be inputted is the line data set. Because if you do not select the point data set, you still can build a network data set. And the second one, we need to prepare uh, the field information of the network data set you need to ensure that the line data for building the network contains a field that denotes the network resistance, such as the field, uh, such as the time and also the distance information. But in Supermap, our line data set is automatically count, uh, measuring the distance of uh, the line itself in the SM length attribute ID, field ID. And if you want to do a root analysis and you need to generate the text information of the path guide, uh, for example, you, you go from uh, road A to road B, you need to make sure that the line data has a name uh, so, we can, so we can perform the path guide, uh, so we can enable the path guide and uh, see the text information inside of the path guide. So we will open the Supermap ID desktop now. All 
All right, so this is uh, Supermap IDEX Top 10i version 2 2020. And today we will uh, do some demonstrations of network analysis and 3D spatial analysis using this uh, platform. So here I have prepared uh, data uh, for this webinar. Also, I will share this data, I think, in the last presentations. I will share the link of the data so you can take a look and also try it by yourself. This is the data itself. This is the workspace. We store our project in the workspace. So we need to open the file workspace that already uh, stored before, already prepared before for this webinar. So here I have two uh, folders of the data itself. We have the 3D Analyze and Network Analyze. The first one, we will open the Network Analyze, the workspace file, this one, can open it. And here in this um, data source, actually it stored many POI and then polygons and then the line data set or even the road data set in one city in China. So if you want to take a look, this data contains this following, is something like a base map data of this uh, city. But we will just use the road data for this exercise. So here we have road data set. I mean, road. Sorry. this one okay here if we want to uh, do some network uh, analysis we need to make sure that we have a we have a red network data inside so we need to uh, we need to construct the 2d network by using this uh, by using these tools we go to the traffic analysis tab and then we go to the network by topology and we can uh, see there is a tool, uh, namely structure to the network here. And it will automatically detect the data set that we highlighted on the workspace manager. But if we don't want this data to be, uh, to be built as a network data set, we can just erase it and find the data on this Then we can road net line. Okay, this is the road net line. And since we don't have the road point, uh, road net point, it's okay because we can split the lines at intersections here. So if we have the point, the point data set, we can split the line by point. But if we don't have the data, the point data set, we can split the line at intersections here and then we can uh, set the result settings parameters as default it means that uh, this uh, the, the network data set the resulted network data set will be stored in the udb juncture and also the data set is juncture at underscore network this is the result data set so there we can also uh, set the split tolerance uh, this the split tolerance uh, representing the minimum distance between points and or lines. And we can click OK if we already set the parameters itself. Yeah, so this is the network data set created after we start construct the 2D network. If we want to take a look and display it on the map windows, we can do right click and add to new maps. And then we can create a spatial index to speed up the display speed, click yes. So this is the road uh, network data set. Before that, it, it this shows like this, let me road net line. 
So before that, the data set is like this without the uh, intersections point. But after we construct the network data set, it also uh, stored the, this one, it also stored the network node of the road net line. So it already created the network data set for this uh, line data sets. The first, uh, the first steps has already finished. This is what we need to perform the network analysis. If we don't have, or if we didn't open the network data set like this, if our map windows is empty, the network analysis uh, menu or tools cannot be uh, clicked because this is offline. This is uh, really sensitive to the data that we open in the map windows. All right, so I will share also, uh, share again the presentations. All right, so this is the first steps. Uh, we need to create the network network models. And if you are, uh, if you want to, uh, to open the attribute field of this network uh, the network line of the line data set. I will open it later on the following analysis. This is the first step. And the second step, we will do uh, optimal path analysis. Uh, this is the second workflow. The optimal path analysis is used uh, is one of the commonly used function of network analysis. The optimal path analysis is used to find the path of the least resistance between two points in the network. The least resistance has different uh, meaning, such as those based on a single factor, like a shortest time or the lowest cost or the best traffic conditions or others. Uh, while the shortest route is a special case of the single factor of the optimal path. And this figure uh, is showing the difference result of optimal path analysis from stops one to stops two. If we check the least edges parameters in the uh, setting parameters while we do the optimal path analysis, what does it mean? Uh, for example, the edges of the red route is less than the number of edges on the green routes. But actually, the overall length of the resulting routes may not be the shortest. Uh, from stops one to stops two, the red line may be not the shortest, but it has the least edges because we check the least edges parameters. And before performing uh, any network analysis based on our network data set, we need to set the environment settings. And the environment setting window is used to set the global parameters of the network analysis. Now, uh, let's take a look. Let's take a look on the SuperMap IDEX double gain. So here, uh, first I want to show you the attribute data of the road net lines. It shows like this. It has the name of the road and also it has the network resistance. I mean, the resistance, the network resistance is the distance. On this data set, the network resistance only the distance. But we can also create another attributes to display another cost like time or even the velocity or the weight cost. Uh, it's based on our requirement. And here I will open the, I already opened the network data set here. And uh, if we want to do some network analysis, we need to make sure that we already set the environment setting here. Here, we can check this environment setting. And in this uh, environment settings, we have uh, some toolbar menu. The first one is the style settings. It uh, it can set the styles of our uh, nodes and also edges and also area or text. And we have also the traffic rule setting. If we want to enable the like one way traffic uh, rule and edit its attributes uh, such as forward value, prohibited value and backward value, we can enable this one. But since our data doesn't have traffic rule settings, so we don't enable these settings. And we have also the turntable settings here. 
and the weight settings. And also we have the grid flow directions and analysis area settings. And also we have pipeline uh, model setting and check loop and check network models. But the most important part is this one because we can uh, do optional uh, settings for this for this toolbar menu but for the network analysis parameters we need to make sure that this uh has already this is this already being inputted for the parameters itself the first one is the network data set of course we need to choose the network data set and uh, we can choose the forward weight field and also backward weight field for the weight field uh, we choose the sm length as our cost as our cost as or as our network resistance and we have the node id field uh, this is the unique uh, this is uniquely identify every node in the network data set and also we have the h id field which is also uniquely identify every arc in our network data set and we have start node uh, the sm from node so our line will be starting from from this node to SMT node. It looks like this. If you want to take a look, we can uh, expand this one and, sorry, this one. It has the attributes SM from node and SM to node. This is automatically generated when we construct it to the network. So you don't need to be worried. And also we can uh, set the traffic rules here and turntable here. But uh, currently we don't have the information of the traffic rules. The turntables can be set, but uh, it's very complex. I mean, it's a complex setting, so we don't want to do, do the settings of the turntable. So let me show you the optimal path analysis. Here I have a stops and also the barrier we will choose we will put this data for the optimal path analysis. Here we go to the traffic analysis menu bar or the tool uh, menu bar. And also we can find the now optimal path analysis inside this network analysis gallery. We can click this optimal path analysis and uh, we can pick the point. Uh, we can pick the point based, at, based on the add mouse click or we can import the uh, stations point. Here I want to import the stops by using the data. Here I have the stops. And uh, since the data doesn't have any name field, so I will just uh, make it empty. And also we can click OK. So I have four uh, station. So station one, station two, station three, and station four. And this optimal path analysis will find the shortest route because we only set the SM line as the network resistance. It will find the shortest route from the station one to the station two, and from the station two to the station three, and uh, station three from to the station four. We can click run. It shows like this. This is the route from station one and station two, two to three and three to four. And uh, if we have a, a barrier, a barrier here, it means that we have some, uh, yeah, we have some barrier that cannot be passed through the line. So we can add the barrier node. We can import it, the barrier points. And we can click OK. There is two barrier node here uh, along the station one until to the station two and station three to the station four. And the resulted, uh, the, the resulted optimal path route will be changed if we run it again. So the resulted route will uh, it will, it will not pass this barrier node, so we, it will find another route from station three to station four. So this is the barrier node uh, looks like. And this is the optimal path analysis. So we will go back to the slides.
and this is the sec the third one we have the traveling salesman problem or we call it TSP analysis and TSP analysis is an unordered path analysis the TSP analysis can decide the order to visit the nodes and its target is to get the minimum sum of the travel route impedances so what is the difference between TSP analysis and also optimal path analysis the difference between TSP analysis and optimal path analysis is the method to visit all the network nodes um, in the optim in the TSP analysis the former can decide the visiting nodes uh, of the visiting order of the nodes but the latter must visit the nodes according to the specified order specified order it means that stop uh, the order one two three and four in the optimal path analysis uh, the stops one will directly go to stops two without uh, without considering this is this is the shortest route or not from the from the stops one but in the tsp analysis uh the resulted line or the resulted route will be from stop one to stop four first and then stop four go to stop two and stop three because stop four is nearest to the stop one this is the difference uh between the optimal path analysis and uh, tsp analysis so let me show you the demonstrations so here is the demonstrations we will delete instance this optimal path analysis and now we will perform find tsp path and we will add import the same data set to see the differences uh, we have the stops one uh, stops data set and then click OK. And then we can also, yeah, this is this. We, we can also set the parameter settings here. The parameter settings, uh, this is the result setting parameters. We can also enable the path guide. Can check the path guide first here. And here on the setting, we can enable the path guide to see the text information on this path guide. Okay, can okay. get click OK and then we can perform this analysis. So this is the path guide. Walk, uh, from start stop, walk uh, around 40 meters ahead along and enter the anonymous age. It means that this age doesn't have a name. So this is the path guide and we can see on the result itself, on the result, from station one, they go to station four directly because the station four is the nearest station from station one comparing with the stations two. Uh, but doing the optimal doing the optimal path analysis, it will directly go to the stations two because it will uh, it will consider the order of the stops. All right, so we go back to the slides. And the next one, we have the closest facility analysis. The basic concept of closest facility analysis is to find the nearest facility point to the known point or the event point. You can find one or more facilities points that can be reached by the minimum cost. And the analysis result is the optimal path between the event point and also the facility stop or the facility point. For example, if the event stop is the place where the traffic accident happens and the injured people need to be sent to the nearest hospital for emergency treatment within 10 minutes, for example, the surrounding hospital cannot be reached within 10 minutes won't be taken into consideration. But we need to make sure that uh, time is the cost for this network analysis. And in this case, the locations of the accident is an event point and the surrounding, ho uh, surrounding hospital is the facility stop or the facility point. Um, in a sense or in practical, closest facility query is path analysis as well. 
And during the analysis, we should consider the sections that have barrier points and barrier edges that cannot be passed. So we will perform this analysis on Supermap Index Top. So this is Supermap Index Top again. And uh, here I have, uh, okay, let me delete this one first, find the SP path. And here I have the hospital data set, I guess. Hospital, yeah, I have the hospital data set. We will perform the find closest facility. For example, I have a, okay, let me import the hospital first. Hospital as a facility stop, right click on the facility stop and then click import and find hospital. It has around 82 hospital in the city. And here we can uh, directly, uh, directly detect the name field of this hospital because in this hospital data set, we have the name here, the name attributes. Okay, we can import this hospital data set. It has around 85 hospitals in the city. And this is the distribution of this hospital. And for example, there's an accident happen in this point. Let me click the event stop here. And I want to find the closest, uh, the nearest facility stop or the nearest hospital from this event stop. We can set the parameters, how many facility uh, number that we want to, uh, we want to get we want to detect on this analysis. For example, I want to find maybe five, five hospital nearest to this, uh, to this event stop. And we can also display the, sorry, we can also set the parameters such as search uh, directions, because sometimes the cost from the, the cost from the event to facility and facility event is different. For example, the time uh, from the event nodes to facility nodes is different from the time cost while we pass the facility point to event point. Okay, and then we will enable, you can also enable the path guide parameters here on the result settings, and then you can click okay, and you can perform this by clicking this running button. Yeah, so this is the uh, the result analysis. The result, yeah, this is the result analysis. It will shows the path of different colors to different hospital uh, within the range of this event stop. It will find only five hospital that the nearest hospital from the event stop, and also display the path how to get there. And if we want to know the tax information, we can also display on the enable path guide. So that's the find closest facility analysis. Next one, we will go back to the presentations. Next is the surface area analysis. The surface anal area analysis is uh, to conditionally find the scope of the surface area that the specified surface stations can uh, provide. First, you need to understand two basic concepts. The first one is the surface stops. Uh, the surface stops is the center point of the surface. This is the surface stops providing the location of the surface, such as, for example, supermarket, post office, community of hospital or others. And we have also surface area. The surface area uh, is the, the area that within a certain impedance taking specified point as the centers and containing all the accessible edges. Simply, it refers to the area that is served by the locations according to some certain conditions to provide a particular uh, surface. For example, the governor area of a community police stations according to the administrative divisions. And uh, in the network analysis itself, the network nodes uh, with resources 
are abstracted as a surface tops. So the network nodes is abstracted as the surface tops and the maximum distance of the surface top is abstracted as the surface radius. And in this analysis results, you can get the surface network and the surface area uh, in the polygon form. This analysis is generally used to evaluate and also analyze the surface scopes of the public facilities such as post office, hospital, supermarket, uh, and others, so as to provide the references for selecting the optimal path uh, the optimal locations of the public facilities. So we will um, go to the supermap I desktop here. And uh, for example, let me delete this fine closest facility. For example, I want to uh, see the surface area of this government POI. What is government POI? Okay. Yeah, of this government POI. Uh, what is the surface radio? Uh, what is the surface area in for this POI government? And then we can go to traffic analysis here. And we can go to surface area analysis. It only uh, it only need to input the surface stops. So we will import the surface stops from the government government point. Yeah, government points. But since the government point may be the records may be so um, many, there has so many records. So we will filter this government POI only filter the ID um, less than 10. So we'll only display around nine to data. Yeah, nine data. Here we have the surface stops. And we can here set the surface radius. We can select all to assign the surface radius uniformly, for example, 500 meters. And then we can click OK here. Then we can click Run. So this is the surface stops. Uh, surf, so this is the surface area of this surface stops within the 500 meters radius. So it can be also per, uh, be performed for the for the supermarket surface area. So how how is the coverage of that supermarket uh, within the community? Or we, uh, is it? Does it need to to build another supermarket in that community or not? We can analyze from this surface uh, area analysis. All right. So we we'll go to the presentation again. We have the location and location analysis. I think this is the last network analysis that we will. Uh, perform in the live demonstrations. Uh, location or locations uh, analysis. This analysis is used to select the optimal locations for one or more service providers in a certain region so that the facilities can be one of the most cost effective ways to provide services and uh, this location allocations is more than just how to locate, which also needs to allocate the demands of the demanding points to the appropriate facility service area. For example, I have two figures here. Uh, the first one, the, the left figures is the center point location map, and the right figures is the optimal location allocation analysis result. In this figure, we have a, this is a city which has a 15 hospital whose distribution are shown in this figure, uh, in this figure, in the left figure. Now, you want to select seven from the 15 hospitals as the city's centralized hospital, for example, for doing the physical examinations of the college entrance test. And it needs to cover the areas as many as possible to facilitate the physical examinations of the candidates. So we will select seven optimal locations from 15, uh, from 15 hospitals, uh, like represented in this uh, figure on the right figure. 
based on these condi uh, conditions, location allocation analysis will give the best sites and circle that uh, the surface range of each hospital. And we will also do the demonstrations of this scenario applications, application scenario for the location and also allocation analysis. So let me share screen again, the desktop. So this is the surface area Then we need to delete this instance first. And uh, for example, I have 15, so I have 15 hospital for the location allocation analysis. If, because we already do the manage, uh, do the importing data set for stops or even stations, now I want to do add by mouse. So we can pick random, we can pick random points as the hospital. We can pick around, can pick around 15 hospital. Okay, this one. We have a 15 hospital uh, in this city, in this network data set. And here we can set the setting. I want to find center count is seven. So I want to find seven hospital uh, within the 15 hospital that is the the uh, that hit that has the 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 most coverage area for this hospital okay and click okay and then we can run all right so it has already picked the only seven hospital only seven hospital uh, as a center count that has the most coverage area for the hospital itself to do the physical examination, for example. It is, it, uh, those are center five, which is represented as a green colors and uh, center nine and center 10, uh, center 10, center 11, center 12, center 14 and center 15. So this is the result. If I add more, I add more center here. And if I want to detect all part center count is oh. Yeah, it will also show you the the coverage of the center 16. And if you compare with the another centers. You can see the coverage area from the center point 16 and also center point 11. This is the coverage area based on the nodes of the edges or of the network data set. So this is the last uh, the last analysis that will be performed as the network analysis. Actually, we have many more. We have the find MTSV path, allocate, and also for the facility network. Uh, this is applicable for the pipeline. We have also the critical element and also shorted path tracing to trace the upstream and also downstream. And also we can do another analysis. If we have the 3D pipeline analysis, we can also perform the pipe burst uh, based on the two burst point. We can locate the upstream and the uh, downstream also. And also we can find the critical facility analysis. This is based on the uh, on the public facility network, and this network analysis is based on the transportation network analysis. All right, so I think that's all of the network analysis. Okay, and the uh, next one we will talk about the 3D GIS. I think most of you also already uh, already familiar with the 3DG super map. Because we already we already uh, do some webinars about uh, 3D, 3D GIS. So what is the 3D GIS? 3D GIS in SuperMap. We will uh, explain details on the following slides. So 3D is not only intended to beautify or support visualizations 
the three DGs is not only intended to beautify and support visualizations, but it comes to analysis and also identifications. For example, uh, usually in one area or in, in one country, there is a vertical and horizontal legality. For example, if we are going to make certain infrastructures such as airports or flyovers, then uh, there is an area of danger vertically and also horizontally. By modeling in 3D, it will be easier to find out the right regulations. And another example in urban area also has the legality in vertical. If you have modeled using the 3D visualizations, it will be detected which buildings who violate the rules. Can display, uh, we can click again the visualization video here. Another legal aspect is the legal distance detections, which is shown on the left figures. Um, this is the legal distance detections from the building to the road. So this is based on our 3D designer. And uh, here I want to introduce the Supermap 3DG technology system before we're going to the live demonstrations. Uh, Supermap 3DG technology system, uh, starting from the 2D and also 3D integration models, which consists of the 2D uh, point line regions and also 3D point line region and solid. And we, we, we have talked about 2D network, and maybe later we will conduct another webinar about the 3D network, which is a 3D pipeline made uh, for sample. And we have also thin or triangulated irregular network, and also tetrahed tetrahedralized irregular mesh. And uh, we have grid, and it can be represented in 3D as a voxel grid. I will show you later on the following slides. And uh, from the 2D and 3D integration models, uh, we, uh, we can import uh, many kind or multi-source 3D data uh, and integrate them in one platform, or we call it multi-source 3D data integrations. What kind of 3D data models that can be imported to Supermap IDX Top or to Supermap platform? We can import oblique photography models. Uh, this is the models the, ob the photo oblique photography models is generated by using the UAV, for example, and using the for the image processing software, of course. And uh, we can also import the manual modeling and integrate it with the GIS data. Manual modeling, for example, like uh, SketchUp or 3D Max or any other modeling software. And we can also uh, import the 3D terrain. Uh, point cloud, point cloud data or leader data and symbolize 3D models. So we can also um, change our 2D data into the 3D symbolized models. For example, we have a 2D point of a trees, uh, distribution of the trees point. We can display it as a 3D, trees, 3D tree symbolized models. And we can also import the pipelines and beam BIM stands for uh, Building Information Modeling, and we can also import and integrate 3D field. And now uh, in the version 10.1, this is the newest one, uh, we can also import the geological body, uh, geology 3D models. And after we integrate those data, uh, we, uh, we can uh, export it to our format, spatial 3D model data format, the S3M format that can be accessed uh, by our uh, spatial 3D model data surface interface standard to be displayed in different terminals. For example, WebGL, this, it can be displayed in the web applications using the iClan 3D for G WebGL. And then it can be also displayed in the VR equipment or virtual reality equipment. Uh, and also it can be displayed on augmented reality uh, using the AR in your mobile phones. And now we can also interact with the game engine and we can also export our 3D models data set into the 3D printing format like .stl. And this is, this can, uh, this kind of terminal also will, uh, will be displayed as a 3D GIS applications. 
So this is our 3D GIS technology system. If you have, uh, we can import many kind of formats, uh, such uh, for example, in the BIM data, there are many kind of format data for the BIM, and we can import it uh, natively or even using the maybe the plugin. We can import it uh, in SuperMap iDesktop and do the analysis and also publish it to the uh, web applications or publish it to our GIS server. Okay, this is one of a video of a real case of SuperMap software implementation uh, in integrating more than one type of 3D data, including we have like this, a terrain data, and then we have a yeah, 3D terrain data, and then we have the beam here. The, the factory is uh, re represented as a beam data, and also the this this bridge is also represented by the building information modeling data. And from this, we can imagine clearly what if the results of the realizations of beam data in the region and the experience of analyzing in 3D will increase our accuracy in making the future decisions. That's uh, the following slides uh, are showing the capability or the 3D, all the 3D use for objects that we can clearly see or can be seen with our own eyes. Then uh, we will try to develop again how to express the 3D continuous space or what we will usually only see from the data. Like from CSV, which contains coordinate, coordinates and related data such as temperature, we cannot see this temperature in our in uh, by our own eyes but we can see by the data uh, such as the temperature field and also the wind field we have the sunshine rate and also the contamination rate or the signal field of the telecommunication and we can uh, express this 3d continuous space using the voxel grid here we have a voxel grid which used for continuous space or 3D space consists of volume elements uh, in a regular hexagonal cubes or prisms and arranged regularly in 3D space. Voxel grid, voxel grid is a simple structure. So it's a simple structure and this is basically an interpolation of the 3D point data sets. In this case, we're trying to express the signals value based on the voxel grid. Uh, we have the data that should be spreading in the whole area, but then we extract the properties and do a covering model surface visualizations. We can get the expression for each building eventually. Okay, moreover, Supermap's ability to do 3D analysis is unquestionable because we already uh, we already do the research for the 3D for a long time ago. And in this slides, uh, I will show you some of spatial analysis feature for the 3D spatial analysis. For example, visibility analysis, uh, interfaceability analysis, shadow rate analysis, the skyline analysis, program analysis, terrain contour, and terrain aspects. Okay, but I think we don't uh, we don't do every analysis on the 3D spatial analysis. We will do the demonstrations here, the 3D spatial analysis for this workflow. Only six analysis that we will perform on this uh, webinar or this workshop, sorry. So the first one is the slope and the spec analysis. And the second one, we will move to the flood analysis, the visibility analysis, and then the fuchsia analysis, dynamic fuchsia and shadow analysis. I will try to occupy different uh, 3D data uh, for this analysis demonstrations. For example, for the slope and flood analysis, uh, in particular, we will use the DM, 3D DM data. And for the feasibility analysis and fuchsia analysis, maybe we will use 
the uh, yeah for the following maybe we will use the manual modeling data if the time uh, still enough that i will also uh, displaying another 3d data and doing another analysis uh, besides this workflow so the first one is the slope and aspect analysis slope and aspect uh, analysis is used to analyze slope and aspect for a specified specific area uh, slope itself is the gradient or the artist steepness of a unit of terrain and the aspects identifies the downslope directions of the maximum rate of change in value from each cells to its neighbor slope and aspect are calculated at each point in the grid uh, by comparing the point elevations to that its uh, to that of in uh, its neighbor, um, slope is often used uh, often measured in degrees or in percent rise from from zero to eighteen uh, to sixty degrees. Sorry, ninety degrees. And aspects measures the directions of steepest slope for a location on the surface. It is usually measured in degrees where uh, zero degrees is due to north and 90 degrees is due east and 180 degrees is due south and 270 degrees is due west. And this is the network, uh, sorry, this 3D spatial analysis environment settings, the settings for 3D spatial analysis or the window tab. Okay, let me show you how to do the slope and aspect analysis using Supermap IDEX stuff. So this data uh, will not be used again. So I will just uh, exit or close this workspace. So I will close this workspace. Okay, and then we will open another workspace or another data source. So we can choose whether we want to open workspace as a project or we want to just import or open the data source or the database itself. I think for the 3D analysis, I will just open the data source or the database, the file database. Here I will open it on the 3D analyze. I have four, actually I have four um, exercises that uh, the main the main demonstration will be only for, uh, in particular particularly only for the 3d spatial analysis here I have the 3d scene and we can open the dm.udb this is our file data source format udb you can click open and the insights of the dm dm data source there is three uh, yeah, there is some data sets. This is a, a raster data set, raster data set represented by this uh, symbols, this icon. And if you want to open it on 2D, we can just click, uh, yeah, you can just double click on the data set. But if we want to open it on the 3D data set, uh, as a 3D data set, we can do right click and also we can choose add to new spherical scene. And we can add this DM as image and also edge terrain. So we can zoom to layers. Yeah, so we can also uh, adjust our mouse, adjust the view of this 3D. And you can also see the performance of rendering this 3D data using Supermap by desktop. It's very fast and it's very fluent. For example, I'm doing the, okay, the 3D analysis a menu bar will uh, will be will be displayed if we open the 3D data. If if we do not open the 3D data, the menu bar is only until this online tab menu. Okay, let me search if it's covered by the zoom. Let me. Okay. Let me, yeah. Okay. We have the 3D analysis here. And uh, first one, we will conduct the slope and aspect analysis. Okay, slope and aspect analysis. I will, uh, I will exit this 
windows, okay. And for the uh, for the slow brand aspect analysis for the 3D, we can just uh, draw a polygon to proceed to proceed the slope analysis. So, for example, I draw a polygons here. And right click if we finish. Okay, wait, wait. Oops, sorry. Open it on the new spherical scene. Perform the 3D analysis here. You can see the different uh, color table. The different color tables are showing the uh, slope, the slope of this uh, of this polygon area, and the color table can be set also. Uh, the transparency also can be set here. You can set the transparency for displaying the slope. And if we want to open the aspect, it will show the directions, the directions, the aspect directions here. And if we want to create the flow, it will move dynamically uh, through the directions of the uh, thickness itself. If we want to also perform the slope and aspect together, it will show like this. Okay, this is slope and aspect analysis, and you can do the export, but this export uh, only applicable for exporting the uh, the result. Sorry, the area analysis polygons. Slope region is the area analysis that we draw earlier to to display this uh, simulation of the slope and aspect analysis. So this is the first three D analysis, uh, which is the slope and aspect. Now let's just delete it and we go back to the presentations. Okay, next one, we will conduct the flood analysis. So flood analysis, um, according to specified maximum and minimum elevations and submergent speed or the debit, uh, debit yeah, or the debit value, Dynamic simulation of a regional water level from the minimum elevations to the maximum elevations of the submergence process. And it is applicable for terrain and DM data. So the input data, it should pass the elevations value. It should pass the elevation value, uh, such as the DM data. And this function is used to simulate the flooding process over a duration of time within the specified speed and within the maximum or minimum elevations. Um, the application scenario as, uh, as follows, like we simulate how the flood levels and coverage changes over time in a certain area. And it is helpful for decision makers of disaster management. And the analysis result can provide a reference uh, for constructing a project for water conservancy. So this is the parameter setting for flooding analysis. You can see we can set the texture call table, we can set the opacity, and for the playing setting for the animations of the flood analysis, we can set the current altitude, the minimum altitude of the flood, the maximum altitude of the flood and the total time. This is the total time durations for the flood to be happened. And the speed, the speed is the speed of the water. Of the, like It's like a debit. Let me show you how to do this analysis using the same dat data, I guess, yeah. Yeah, if you have another data, in particular GM data, or DSM, DSM data, it's also okay. So we will find some place to generate this analysis. Okay, this is the flooding analysis inside the 3D analysis menu. You can also draw a poly, draw a polygons here. 
and right click if you finish. So you can see there is a, uh, animations of the flood that happened on the inside the polygon that we drew earlier. And for this analysis, we can set the minimum visible altitude and maximum visible altitude. For example, uh, suggest the current altitude is zero now, but I want to display the uh, the flood until only until 1000. This is 1000 because this DM data, yeah, this is covering a big size of area. So the elevations must be also big. But if you have the small area, small size area, you can uh, make this, uh, I mean, the elevation is making sense. Okay, let me, okay. Mm, maximum visible altitude is 1000. Then uh, let's see the result. So it is moving from the current altitude now is 800 and it will stop at 1000. So the elevations that is uh, bigger than 1000 will not covered by the float. By the flood, yeah, and we can also set the speed or set the total time. For example, these simulations take 10 seconds, but if we want to only five seconds, it will be uh, it will be performed faster. And the speed is automatically changed if we change the total time and vice versa. If we change the speed and the total time will be changed also. So this is the flood analysis and the export is also the same. We only can uh, export the region or the polygons data. All right, okay. And then let us go to the next one. Okay, we have the feasibility analysis. This feasibility analysis is often used uh, as 3D analysis. And these functions is used to determine whether a certain locations in a 3D scene uh, are visible to observer locations. In feasibility analysis, there are observer points and points to be observed. Uh, there can be more than one points to be observed. Uh, for example, as shows in this figure, there are five uh, observed points. And also the result of the analysis are lines of visibility. The green lines show this is the visible part, and the red one shows that is the, the unvisible part. All right, so let me show you how to do this analysis. I'm going to I'm going to use another data set here. Okay, this is the DM data, but I'm going to use another data. So I will open another file data source, which is the fine the CPD data. This is the central business district, the manual modeling data using the 3D Max. So I have this data. I'm going to open it together. Right click, add to new spherical scene. Okay, and then we zoom to layers here. Okay, here I have a. Can this? Okay. Yeah, we have this effect for the night and day time. Okay. Okay. Here I'm going to show you the visibility analysis. Um, let me find some places, for example, this one. Okay, and to perform this visibility analysis, you can go to 3D analysis and you can uh, click on this visibility analysis tools. And you can draw a viewpoint first. This is your viewpoint, for example, in this window, your viewpoint. And then you want to uh, you want to know if the certain points of the or the point that being observed is visible from your viewpoint or not. So I will okay. 
Okay, right click if you finish. And this is the result. The result is a line, visibility line. So if it can be seen from this viewpoint, the, the color of the line is green. But if, if it cannot be seen from this viewpoint, the color of the line is red. Okay, let me show you why this is red. Okay, why this is red? Because it covers by this, um, yeah, by this building. Sorry. Yeah. And this one is also red because it cannot be seen from this viewpoint. So this is the feasibility analysis. Uh, yeah, feasibility analysis result. And next, we will conduct another analysis, which is the view shape analysis. Um, this is the uh, this is the the concept is the same with the feasibility analysis, but the uh, analysis result may be different. Uh, the feasibility analysis result is the aligned, while the view shape analysis result is an area. And this function is used to identify all the visible and invisible ranges in the analysis area of a scene with models from an observer point at a certain horizontal and vertical angle of view within a, an extent determined by a specified red radius. And the visible ranges are colored in green and the while invisible in red. So you can see the horizontal horizontal angle, vertical angle, and also the radius uh, for this analysis parameters. Let me show you how to do it. Okay, I will delete this uh, viewpoint analysis result. And I will, yeah, besides you go to this button, uh, to this menu bar, to the analysis menu bar, you can go to this window also. Can perform view shape analysis, then click add, and you can draw a start point here. And here you can adjust your view, adjust the radius, adjust the horizontal perspective angle and vertical perspective angle. For example, like this, you can see the horizontal perspective is 120, while the vertical perspective is 60. If I change into 30, it will be like this. If I change into 60, this. So this can be set on the parameter settings or adjusting your view on the mouse. And the analysis result is like this. There is the red colors, which shows the invisible, uh, invisible part. And there is the green color, which shows the visible part. Okay, that's the view shape analysis. Now let's go to the next analysis. The next analysis is dynamic view shape. Dynamic view shape analysis is used to identify the features that you can see and cannot see from a certain horizontal and vertical angle of view as you walk along the route. So the animations is used to show intuitively the coverage of site and distinguish the visible and invisible space with different colors. So the difference between uh, fusion analysis and the dynamic fusion analysis, the fusion analysis result is static, while the fusion analysis result is dynamic. So it's moving. You can do the animations of the cars of the plane, or even you, if you want to walk along the line that you draw. It can be displayed uh, using this dynamic fusion analysis. Let me show you how to do it. It's very easy. For example, I have this. Okay, I, I will walk along the street. So I will draw a line. I will draw a line, horizontal line on this street. Dynamic fusion and then click add. Draw a line here. Right click if you finish. So you can see there is a man walk along the line and you can see the dynamic fusion analysis result of this point. 
And you can also adjust your view angle. For example, I stop this. Okay, this is your view angle. But you can adjust your view angle here. Visible distance, you can, yeah, practical perspective. You can adjust horizontal perspective, you can adjust. Yeah, and also you can adjust the visible distance here. And also you can do the custom role here, for example, car. And also we can display as plane. The plane will be on the above ground. So maybe the analysis result of a plane and also analysis result of the people walk along the street is different. And you can play with scene or you can first do the first person play. The first person play, uh, the perspective is the perspective of the role itself. For example, if we choose this male, the perspective is the eye of the of the people walking along the street. So like this, they can uh, they can see this trees and they can it, they cannot see which area. Based on our settings for the horizontal, vertical, and also the visible distance. Yeah, so that's the view, the dynamic view shot analysis. Now let's go back to the presentations. Now we have the last one, which I want to show on this workshop. This is the shadow analysis. So shadow analysis is used to calculate the durations of sunlight period of time within an extended event. location is an important factor for analyzing the change of sunlight spatial shadow projected by neighboring terrain into considerations and gets the ratio of sunlight duration to the specified time span. So you can see on this figure, uh, the, the shadow analysis will be represented as a sampling point. You can, you can adjust the sampling point distance. For example, I think the default value is five, five meters. Yeah, every five meters, but you can adjust that sampling uh, point distance so i will just show it on our, my desktop for example i want to analyze the shadow analysis the shadow duration on this building so you can see there's a shadow behind this building okay let me draw a let me draw a shadow analysis polygons for uh, proceed the shine analysis of the shadow analysis. Right click if we finish. And this is the result. So the result is a sampling point. And you can see the minimum height of the sampling points is, z is one. You can set as zero, for example, and it will dynamically change. And uh, this one, I, this is the zero, the zero meters height, and this, and you can see here the sampling distance is five, and also the maximum height is twenty, the twenty meters. We want to only display ten meters.
10 meters and then we will perform analysis and wait for the result. Yeah, the result will be changed into 10 meters height for the shadow rate. Uh, and also if you change the sampling distance S2, it will make the intensity for the shadow rate more deeper. And you can uh, click this button to query the sunshine rate for each point. For example, this XYZ coordinate system has the daylighting rate 92 percent. But if we go back, if we go behind this building, the daylighting rate is very low. This is the zero percent because there's no there's no sunlight uh, covering the behind of the building. Yeah, so that's the shadow analysis. Okay, let's go back to the, okay, this I think since that is the last the last analysis that I want to show you about the 3D spatial analysis because this this is not looks, I mean, this water not look good. Let me show you how to do the 3D symbolized models. Here, I want to change this into the 3D style symbols. Oh, there's no 3D stuff. Okay, this 3D fill. Still water, and I click OK. Okay, I think this text, this uh, this UDB data set doesn't have the effect for this uh, for the modeling. For the op for the water modeling, so let me open it again. Yeah, it doesn't have, so we can just do it here. So here we have also the effect for the visible sun effect using this trajectory time. You can see the shadow is different from time to time. The shadow visualization is different from time to time. We can do this visualization. This do this visualization based on the time. Yeah. So go back to the presentations. I think that's the last. Okay, that's the last presentations. That's the last slides I want to share to you guys on the work on these workshops. So if you want to try these uh, exercises, if you want to take a look, or even if you want to um, to do to do again this simulation analysis, you can download these materials on the on this link on the Bitly uh, slash webinar Bangladesh. If you have further questions or further information that cannot be answered on this workshop, you can contact uh, me, bellatsupermap.com, and also you can contact Jarin as the organizer, jarin at supermap.com. Uh, and also you can visit our website to have the news, the, the updated news on Supermap. The, you can also download the product on this website. Yeah, so I think that's all of my presentation. Thank you for listening. If you have any question, I think you can you can uh, type your question on the Q&A box, and if we have, and if we still have time, we can uh, answer your questions directly. But if we don't have time, I think we can answer your questions on the email. Okay, thank you. Uh, I, the time is yours, Miss Jerry. Okay, thank you so much, Vela, for your wonderful demonstration, and it was really informative. Uh, I'm sure that we will we will all be able to get the most out of this demonstration. Okay, uh, so it's time for the Q&A session. I have seen that there are some questions there in the Q&A box. So Vela, I would like to request you to have a look at the queries. All right, so I think we only have four more questions that haven't been answered. So the first one, this is Charibo from Niger, Niger Republic for today's topic, what a system or a PC requirement to follow the workshops. Actually, we have the requirement settings for the hardware, let me check. Here we have, okay, wait. 
let me check the help document about the system requirement and then show you on the screen okay Okay, this is the system requirement. The minimum requirement of for doing the 2D network analysis, you can use this uh, hardware requirement, but the recommended is uh, we have the from 8 GB or higher, but for the 3D functions, the recommend hardware requirements different uh, from the minimum hardware requirements if we just want to do the network uh, i mean if we just want to do the 2d analysis you can use this one if you want to uh, do the 3d function like 3d spatial analysis you can base on this recommended requirements and this help documents actually also embedded on the software download if you download the product on our website okay that's the first questions and the second one, what if anyone need any topology corrections? Yeah, before we are performing this uh, 2D network data sets, uh, sorry, before we perform the 2D network analysis, the first things we need to make sure is this data is topologi topological correct. So we need to uh, do the topology, uh, yeah, we need to check the topology for this data, for the data. And in Supermap, we have also the topology uh, checking for the 2D uh, for the 2D network uh, for the 2D line and also 2D point and also polygons. Yeah, we need to do the topology corrections. But since this data is already being prepared before, so we don't need to do the topology topology corrections anymore. All right. The next questions. Um, okay, answer live. Answer live. Okay. Is full consumption a factor in determining cost? For this uh, simulations, the determining cost is only distance, but in the, uh, in the applicable scenarios, I mean in the real situations, you can adjust your uh, you can adjust your cost depending on your research. For example, uh, if the for example in one city the different type of road can only be accessed by a certain vehicle. So that's the cost of that road. You can set the cost, uh, the roads only can be passed by the truck, for example, or for the for the small vehicle. That's the cost of the determining, I mean, that's the determining cost for the analysis. So if you, uh, if you think that full consumption this also can be considered as your cost parameters while you're doing the analysis. It also can be your determining cost. That's really depend on your data sets, whether that's con whether this data set consists of the information of the full consumption or not. That's depend on your network data set. All right. I'm, I'm from Pakistan. Hello. Okay. And the next one, the 3D model is imported from what? SketchUp. This 3D model is imported by a 3D Max model. Uh, sorry, 3D Max software. This is a 3D Max software manual modeling data set that is being imported to Supermap, and then the, and then being visualized with uh, another 3D data, another GIS data. For example, this 3D this 3D trees is not from the 3D Max, but this 3D trees is. Uh, from our 3D symbolized modeling, so we can integrate. That's that's what we mean. But we that's what we mean by we can integrate by integrating different kind of models data. This models data is from 3D Max, but we can integrate with any other uh, GS data. For example, this water is polygon data, and this tree is a 3D point that is uh, that change into the 3D symbolized models. What's what's sorry? What what is the potential of using Supermap to model the groundwater and the surface movement and the humidity level is the atmosphere? 
What's the potential of using supermap to model the groundwater, the groundwater surface movement and the humidity level in the atmosphere? Okay, I think I didn't quite get it, the questions. Maybe you can send me a email of these questions uh, in details, and I will replay these questions. But just for your information, Supermap also can visualize the 3D models in uh, above surface and also under surface or underground. For underground, we can uh, we can analyze uh, we can visualize the three the geological body layers, and for the uh, above ground, we can simulate like this the 3D skyline, and also another part of the upper part of the surface. Please tell us about this as a profession. Later. Is there any option of simulation of traffic using Supermap I desktop? Simulation of traffic. Uh, yeah, that's uh, there is there's a 2D 2D analysis uh, 2D 2D analysis of the traffic uh, simulations in Supermap I desktop, but not in the 3D. 3D simulation of traffic analysis, but we can uh, we can do the simulations of the vehicle moving, of the vehicle moving uh, above the above this street above the street we can do the simulation. But for the traffic, I think this is basically on the 2D network on, on the 2D network data sets. Okay, I think that's all of the questions. I miss one. Okay, let me show there's one more. What are applicable area of this software in industry? What are applicable areas of the software in industry? Basically, Supermap is a GS platform, is a GS platform providers. Um, as we know, the GS platform can enter to different kind of uh, different kind uh, of industry. For example, uh, if we are doing the like these two analysis, we are talking about the network analysis, and we're talking about the 3D spatial analysis. For the network analysis, it can enter different uh, applicable different different applicable area in different industry. For example, in the disaster management, if they want to analyze. Uh, yeah, analyze the route from the accident to the hospital. It's uh, the accident to the nearest hospital or the nearest police station or the nearest star rescue. We can also do the network analysis based on this uh, network data set. So Supermap can enter different uh, industry at different applicable area. But in this workshop, we're just talking about two analysis, which is the spatial and network. But still, we have many more. Can we predict predict the precipit precipit precipitation level in the area, like the amount of rainfall, using Supermap in 3D, like the way you mod made model of sunlight level? Okay. The uh, we can can we predict the precipitation level? For the rainfall data, uh, for the rainfall data, we cannot we cannot show it we cannot show it as a three D simulations like a three D shadow analysis uh, in Supermap IDEX top because the Supermap IDEX top um, spatial analysis is limited to this toolbar uh, tools. You can take a look which one is the well you can take a look based on your requirement, but for the uh, displaying precipitation level, uh, like a rainfall, amount of rainfall in 3D, we cannot do that, but we can display a simulations of a rainfall. So that's different, I guess. That's not counted the intensity of the rainfall, but they just, uh, they just visualize the rainfall itself. So we're, we, can, uh, we can create a particle effect of rainfall in different area of the models. But we cannot predict the level of the precipitation precipitation uh, 
amount. But in if it is on 2D, I think we can we can still figure out how to do it. Regarding network analysis, I want to go from A to B and return back with different routes how to define the conditions. Very network analysis, I want to go and return back with different routes. Yeah, if you want to go from A to B and return back with different routes how to define the condition, you can define the conditions by using the like forward value and also the backward value. And also the one-way traffic rules, for example, you want you go to A to B using the route A, but if you set the one-way traffic for the route A or for the edges A, you cannot uh, you cannot go back from B to A with using the same route. So that's you can simply you can just use the one-way traffic, but you can still find more way to do it. Can we perform origin destination matrix analysis here? E we can perform the origin destination matrix analysis, but not in the Supermap I desktop. We can perform this on uh, Supermap I desktop X. So we have two different kind of Supermap I desktop, which is .NET and also do and also Supermap I desktop X. We can perform this analysis on Supermap I desktop X. How we can use Supermap in disaster risk management? How Supermap is applicable for environmental impact assessment? I think this question will be uh, long answers. So I will, uh, if you want to know more about Supermap in disaster risk management, I think you can email me or Jarin to take a look on the materials. And also, I will share you the materials about disaster risk management, or maybe Jaring will, Miss Jaring will send you the materials about it on the email. So if you still, uh, if you still want to know about to know more about Supermap in different industry, you can uh, type on the email. Yeah, I think that's all, Miss Jaring. Uh, yes, thank you. Thank you, Vela. So uh, if you guys have any other questions regarding the Supermap and today's demonstration later, uh, please feel free to send us email. We will try to reach you as soon as we can. Before finishing, uh, I would like to announce something. Uh, something about Supermap GIS Contest Bangladesh, which has been arranged by Supermap this year. So here are three groups for the Supermap GIS Contest, including the Mapping Group, uh, Application Analysis Group, Development Group. This contest provides a chance for students to improve the self-educated abilities and excellent students may have job opportunities in Supermap company. So during the contest, students can not only use the advanced GIS software platform for free, but also they can get the online technical support at any time. Moreover, top 10 students will be selected for the final competition. The winner can win prizes up to 500 US dollar with certificates of award. And they can also go to Beijing to defend for 19th International Supermap GIS contest for free. Besides, the instructors and the universities who help organize students to take part in this contest may be awarded with certificates as well. I hope every student who are attending today's session will register and take part in this competition. So to more, know more about the contest, please feel free to send us email at jarinsupermap at the rate of gmail.com or jarin at the rate of supermap.com. We really appreciate your attendance today. You are more than welcome to access Supermap website to get more information about Supermap. We can be found also in LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and you can check out our videos in YouTube too. Thank you all for attending today's event. We will send the certificates to you within seven working days. And Supermap is going to provide three months trial license of the Supermap software to those who attended this program. Uh, you can email us for the packages. Uh, I will finish with just a big announcement, uh, which is Supermap is looking for partners, distributors, and resellers in Bangladesh. So if any of you are interested, feel free to email us. So Supermap will hold more webinars on different topics. So we hope to meet you soon in the next webinars. Till then, stay safe and stay healthy.